In this video, we're going to look at a titration curve for a weak base uh, titrated with a strong acid. So in this titration, our weak base would be our sample. And our strong acid would be our titrant. Uh, in this uh, picture, you see that there is an indicator in our solution. Um, there are multiple indicators that could be used for a titration like this, and we'll go through at least one in the next slide. We are going to look at the titration of a weak base, in this case ammonia, with a strong acid, in this case hydrochloric acid. So our weak base ammonia is not going to ionize or dissociate in water. And so in solution, we are going to have uh, NH3. Our strong acid HCl will ionize in solution. And so instead of having HCl, we'll have H3O plus present, hydronium. And this reaction will form the conjugate acid of ammonia, which is ammonium and water. So that's our net ionic equation for this reaction. And we're going to walk through the titration curve uh, at various points. One thing to notice about this titration curve is we have this initial dip at the beginning, then a flattening out, followed by a more gradual decline in the pH, and then a final flattening out. So we see some similarities to the strong acid or strong base strong acid curve, but a little bit more gradual in the change in pH, and we'll talk about why that is. So first thing we're going to do is start out at the very beginning of our titration. So this is before we add any acid. Um, and in our flask at this point, we just have ammonia and water. So our pH is 11.1-ish. We do have a 0.1 molar solution, but because this is a weak base, our pH is not going to be at 13 like it would be for sodium hydroxide. It's going to be lower because we have less than 50% ionization with water. Um, so as we start to add acid, we start to form ammonium. And so what we see here is this dip is the initial formation of ammonium. And then we see the pH start to level out. And it levels out kind of centered around that half equivalence point. So the half equivalence point is here. At our half equivalence point, we have equal concentrations of ammonia and ammonium. So we've turned half of our ammonia into ammonium. We also still have water and chloride from our HCl solution. We don't have any hydronium present because it's our limiting reagent up until our equivalence point. So before the equivalence point, our titrant is always our limiting reagent, uh, and our sample is always our excess reagent. This region around our half equivalence point is called a buffer zone. In our buffer zone, we have approximately equal concentrations of our initial base and the conjugate acid. And what that does is it helps resist a change in pH using Le Chatelier's principle. So because we have conjugates, if we add more strong, strong acid, it will react with ammonia and form this conjugate, um, which will resist a change in pH. If we just added strong acid to water itself, the pH would shoot down fairly quickly. So this uh, buffer that we form helps to stabilize the pH. Um, however, this only works until a certain point. Once we kind of hit a tipping point, the pH will still decline because there's not enough base left to react with the strong acid we're adding. And so we see that sharp decline in pH that brings us to our equivalence point, which is at 10 milliliters. 
The reason that our equivalence point is 10 milliliters is we have equal concentrations of, uh, of our acid and our base. We need equal moles at our equivalence point. So if we have 10 mils of base, we need 10 mils of our acid. So this is our equivalence point. At our equivalence point, we're not going to have any of the reactants in this, in this reaction left. So we'll just have ammonium, the product of that reaction. We'll have water, and we'll have the spectator ion chloride. Really important, ammonium, NH4, is a weak acid. Because we have a weak acid present at the equivalence point, the pH of our equivalence point is less than 7. It's about 5.75. And this is true for all weak base with strong acid titrations. At the equivalence point, you're always going to have the conjugate acid, and so your pH will always be less than 7. As we continue to add more uh, HCl, we're now adding excess. So we've used up all of our ammonia up to here, and now we're just adding H3O plus that will go unreactive. That's going to drop our pH down. And so after the equivalence point, um, we're going to have, we'll still have ammonium present, uh, we'll still have water, we'll still have chloride, except now we also have hydronium ions. And so we experience a drop in our pH followed by leveling out um, close to a pH of 1, which is the pH of our titrant. So whenever you're looking at a titration curve, there are two ways to tell that it's a weak base. One is you're going to see this initial dip in pH followed by a leveling out. And two, you'll see the, that the equivalence point has a pH below 7. Uh, if we want to use an indicator, to determine uh, our titration or to analyze this reaction, uh, we might not use the same indicator we would use if this was a strong acid, strong base titration. And so we want an indicator that's going to change color around a pH of 5.75. Uh, so a good indicator might be methyl red or bromocresol green. So if we went with methyl red, it's going to change from yellow to orange at a pH of 6. So at 6, it's going to just above 6, it's going to be yellow. And then just below 6, it's going to be orange. Uh, and it will turn red at 4.8. So with an indicator like this, um, we can see that we would like to shoot for the orange endpoint. If we wait until the red end point, uh, what we're going to see is that we're a little bit past, so it turns red here, and we're a little bit past 10 milliliters, so that would introduce some error. So we want to pick an indicator and an end point that's going to be as close as possible to our equivalence point. 